Hi everyone and welcome along. I get asked a lot what brushes I use and it is nearly always the pointed round. It's so perfect for flower painting in particular. So today I'm going to do a little review testing out some of the brushes I love to use and then some that I've not used before. We've got a real range of quality of materials and we're going to see how they shape up next to each other. So uh, instead of grabbing your paints maybe grab a cup of tea and let's get started. This brush review is very much a personal approach. There are so many brilliant reviews out there, um, but I am a watercolour artist who primarily uses these pointed round brushes, and so that felt like the most sensible approach with this review. Now, I've got here six brushes um, that range in price, so let's introduce you to them. First, over here, we have the ProArt Masterstroke, which is technically a mixed media brush, but it is the brush that I began with, and it's the brush that I continue to use today. These um, retail around the time of filming at about £2.50. So yeah, all my prices are based on June 2021. Then we've got the De La Rowney Aquafine brush. Now De La Rowney have, and like many other watercolour brands, have a sliding scale of quality that you can choose from. I've always told my students to buy the best you can afford, but today we're going to put that to the test and see if their Aquafine range, which is their more affordable range, stands up to the more valuable ranges. So we've got the Aquafine synthetic bristle round, and then, oh this one by the way comes in at £3.24. Next to it we've got an amazing um, achievement by Aquafine from De La Rowney. This is a sable round, so they have got real sable bristles in their sort of affordable range. And this brush is £5.56. Then, moving up, we've got a Windsor and Newton um, synthetic sable. So synthetic sable, those bristles, although they're synthetic, they're really, really trying to emanate the feel of a sable bristle. Um, this is their professional watercolour brush, so this is their more high quality brush, and this one comes in at £7.20. Then I'm very excited to have a look at these two because this is Pro Art, so it's the same company that makes my beloved mixed media synthetic bristles, but they've done a Renaissance sable brush. So this is real sable bristles, and this brush comes in at £7.80. And then a little bit further up, I mean, this brush was so fancy it came in its own presentation box Windsor and Newton Series 7 finest sable Kalinsky watercolour brush. These are very, very special indeed. And the price reflects it. This was £21.56. All of these brushes, um, the they're all pointed round, which means the aim is, is that they have a fairly sort of thick amount of bristles in the belly of the brush there, but that they can all form a nice point when wetted. Because of course, right now they're all dry. They've all got quite tufty ends, but as soon as I put them in the water, we get a lovely pointed brush. So let's get on with some testing. The first test we're going to do is we are going to paint a tapered line with each brush. So first off, let's have a look. We get a nice fine point on the uh, synthetic Pro Art Master Stroke range, and I'm gonna use cadmium red. So I'm getting a nice coating right on all the bristles there and I am just going to go straight in and paint a tapered line so getting a fine point squishing it out and ending with a nice fine point now that's really nice I, I like the general sort of control I get of that what we are seeing is a good amount of paint getting sort of covered on the bristles. I think it's only fair with a brand new dry brush to have two goes and that's looking even nicer the second time round. I'm really aware that there may be very few obvious differences between these brushes but that's also just as useful to find out so that you know that you don't need to spend a huge amount of money. So now we're going to go for the next up in price, the De La Rowney Aquafine. This has a feel of a slightly sort of longer, thicker set of bristles, 
but let's see if that results in the same type of brush stroke. You can see we get a broader line with these bristles, so that will be because there's just a slightly more there. It's got a really nice feel to it. And yeah, that's really quite nice as well. I feel like the handle is just a tiny bit thicker as well. And I think just having a little bit more to hold on to is really nice. It's got a nice weight to it as well. Here we have the sable. Now the thing I'm expecting to see with the sable brushes is slightly less springiness and that's why I've always opted for the synthetic bristles in the past because I love the spring back of the synthetic bristle. But let's see, let's get it wet. Beautiful fine point. The bristles are just a little bit shorter than the previous two. So let's see how that results in a tapered line. Getting it really nicely coated. Okay, didn't quite have enough to go for a full, full stroke. You can definitely feel the softness of the bristles resisting far less. And you can also see that even though these are all size four brushes, there is a smaller sort of splay of bristles when the brush goes out, when it's pressed down. This Winsor & Newton brush is the only one that has a sort of contoured handle. It's very nice to hold. Um, it's got quite a long handle too. So those are some things that a lot of people um, look for in a brush, that there is um, a nice sort of molded shape to fit your hand into, which is very nice. I personally find it a little bit unnerving almost that it goes really thin and then thick out. But again, it's just what we're all used to, isn't it? And it is a longer handled brush as well which I do prefer. I'm not so keen on the really, really short ones. Okay, let's find it. It's a very lightweight brush. But it does a beautifully smooth line. So we'll do a second one. See, I'm finding that it's not going into a fine tip very much when it's wet. I can sort of twizzle it in my palette and sort of try and encourage it into a fine tip. So that was an extremely smooth ride for a brush. I very much enjoyed it, but the only thing is I was just a little bit disappointed that the tip didn't go into a really nice fine point. Now to the Renaissance Pro Art Sable brush. Again, another one of the longer handled brushes and a similar length of bristles. <laughs> this, this is gonna be chaos, isn't it? Um, and I think so I've got an idea of how this is going to go, but let's see. So we've got it nicely coated in there. It makes a beautiful fine point. Very nice. Let's give it another, whoops, give it another go. Oh, it managed to splay out really quite nice and broad there. That was impressive. And finally, the Kolinsky Winsor & Newton Finest Sable. So let's see the point. Yeah, it's just, just about getting into a nice fine point. It's got a, a larger amount of bristles. It feels like this is gonna splay out really, really nicely, almost like a mop brush. But the challenge is, is whether we can get a fine tip and I'm struggling to get a fine, fine point on this brush. Hmm, let's try again. That wasn't great. There's a real softness. It is a very, very nice feeling brush. Much better the second time round. It's always good to give these brushes a second go. So what have I denoted from this? First off, the sable brushes have slightly shorter bristles and they're, these two here, 
the display is not so great, but actually these two have done a really nice display. They are the top quality ones. There's quite a nice even feel. Now what I do want to talk about up here is we've got a bit of patchiness here and that is called puddling. And that is something that you are more likely to find in a synthetic bristle brush or a cheaper brush. And because the design and engineering of a true high quality watercolor brush amazingly allows the distribution of water to come off in a much smoother manner. So that is something that's very much in favor of these more expensive real sable brushes. The next stage in this review is we're going to have a go at painting a simple flower because yet again that is the kind of activity I want to make sure my watercolour brush can do really really well. I paint both loose flowers, detailed flowers and you could also say my normal style is somewhere in between in a controlled loose style. So I am going to paint a lovely little loose watercolour flower which is really going to test the petals, um, the fine points of the brush to see if we can really get a lovely petal. So I've got my permanent rose mixed up, I'm going to change my water for a clear one and now I'm going to paint a flower with my first and cheapest mixed media Pro Art Series 60 Master Stroke brush. I'm going to begin up here. So I'm going to put a blob of water on the page, clean my brush off, and now this is a real test of the fine point. I want to get the fine point and I want to do mirrored C curves. I'm cleaning off my brush each time. So what I love about this brush is the fine point allowing for those slender petals. It needs maybe a little bit of help to hold the moisture in. So I do have to keep going back to my water jar to keep picking up a little bit more water. But that is a very nice fine point achieved. Same thing with the next brush up. So blob of water, I already feel like there's less control going on, getting the fine tip is, is a little bit harder, but actually maybe it's just a case of getting to know the brush a bit more because I am much more easily achieving nice broad brush strokes because with loose watercolour painting, what you are after is a brush that can achieve what you want in as few strokes as possible. Because that is the beauty of loose watercolour painting, drawing the shapes with the brush. Very nice. Now let's try the sable. Now the challenge with the real sable bristles is that softness and lack of springiness, which means we might be dragging the floppy bristles around and struggling to get these nice fine points. Okay, so in the water once again, So once I've done that, I've noticed that it doesn't spring back into a fine point. So I'm just having to turn the brush around, but that effortlessly and very nicely fanned out. So as long as I'm careful about where I'm, what, what my bristles are looking like at the beginning of each stroke, then it's, it's a very, very satisfying brush. Although I am very much having to go back in and get a good amount of water. Yeah, it's certainly more labor intensive to get the brush strokes to create the petals uh, once the, sort of the water 
starts to run dry a little bit. So there's a bit more effort involved with this sort of true sable brush from the uh, De La Rowney Aquafine range, which I'm just still amazed they've, they've created a sable brush really because that is an incredible achievement for a very um, much a range that's focused on affordability. Okay, here we go with Winsor & Newton professional watercolour synthetic sable. So this is trying to emanate the qualities of sable whilst also being synthetic. Yeah, it doesn't fan out nearly as much as the sable. But we did see that in evidence in the last test. Not bad, it doesn't fan out as much, and it's just that slightly softer brush because it is trying to be sable. So it, it makes a nice fine point though. Here we go onto the Pro Art Renaissance. Let's drop a nice blob on the page. Okay, clean that brush off and start with a fine tip. It doesn't sort of want to spring back into place, these bristles. It's got a lovely softness to it, but it's just not quite precise enough for me. I'm having to keep on rotating the brush to find the closest thing to a fine point. But it did do a very sort of gentle job. It has a nice nice feel to it but maybe not for what I'm looking for. We're getting those nice fine lines. And finally to our real Sable Kalinsky series 7. Which felt really like a mop. I mean that's I'm struggling to get like a nice round dot there. Right I'm trying very hard to get a fine point. But I also want there to be lots of water on the brush and it just doesn't want to do both of those things. But look at that. The way it just deposits the water in such a smooth way but then just doesn't want to spring back to a fine point means that I would have to go back and tidy that up. And these brushes are all size 4 and I do appreciate that different brands and the way that clothes in different shops a size 8 might be slightly different for each shop but on the whole they're all saying they do the same thing. Um, so we can see the sable brushes there's definitely a sort of drag and a lag um, not wanting to spring back to that nice fine point whereas here we had our first synthetic brush trying to get nice broad strokes was actually a bit of a struggle. There's a sort of midpoint here with these ones that are just trying to sort of emanate the sable um, or are a affordable sable brand which still blows my mind. Um, so yeah quite an interesting finding there. The next test for these brushes is how versatile they are because rounded, I oh, beg your pardon, pointed round brushes um, are sold largely on the fact that they're so good at doing both broad strokes and fine detail. So I'm going to now go back over my flowers and add in little bits of detail. So I've got my Pro Art Master Stroke brush and what I want to do is paint as if this was a little anemone, I want to paint little fine lines from the centre, which this does very nicely. And I then want to do some little dots.
This is beautifully easy to use. When it comes to detail, I've always very much enjoyed how well the Masterstroke range of Pro Art can handle tiny detail even with these larger brushes because of course you can buy smaller brushes but isn't it wonderful when you can just do the whole piece in one go and if you wanted to do a few little lines of detail it flicks really nicely that is an absolute joy for doing fine detail. Next, we have got our De La Rowney Aquafine round, which so far has been really doing quite well. Um, but let's see. So, fine lines. Yeah, definitely struggling to get the really fine point. Yeah, that's that's not that's not doing it. Okay, so we can safely say that the fine tip is just nothing like the Masterstroke Pro Art range. It does do some nice sweeps when you're able to get a bit more sort of length and fluidity on it but not so good for the center of the flower. Then we've got De La Rhine Aquafine Sable. It looks like it's got a fair, oh, fairly good point, but oh no. And I honestly, I am trying my hardest to just use the finest tip. But the trouble is, is you want to also have control. And if you are just trying your hardest to only get the finest tip touching the paper, you're also then relinquishing control of the brush. And you need to have that particularly when you're painting detailed things. See, again, if I'm just, if I'm not worried about control, I can get a really nice sort of thin flick on it but again it's that being able to do it in a slightly measured manner that just is not happening with these brushes. Next we have Windsor & Newton Synthetic Sable. I've got I've got high-ish hopes for this. Okay so I've got it in a as fine a point as I can get. It's not bad, I'd say it's in second place, but not a close second, just a fairly lagging behind with third and fourth at the moment. Let's get our Renaissance Sable. I mean, I think what's helpful with all these tests is you're probably able to predict what's going to happen next, but let's see. Oh, hello. That is not bad. The trouble is the softness of the bristles. Any time I press down, it allows me to sort of squish the bristles out and that's not really what I want. Um, yeah, and it's just not quite as sharp as its synthetic counterpoint. And that's fine, because what we're discovering is that all these brushes have their own qualities and strengths. And if we're lucky enough to have them all in our palette, then we will be very well served. I've chosen these brands because as a UK-based painter, 
these are brands I'm very familiar with. I'm also aware of the amazing range of global paintbrush brands out there. And I look forward to trying a few new ranges. I'm gonna do a few new um, little sort of videos looking at different brands coming up. But for now, this is why I've chosen the ones I've chosen. Um, but the good news is, is I've discovered that they are available globally. Now I'm really struggling to get a fine point here. Look, it just wants to fork, doesn't it? Again, the, the bristles, I mean, I am getting fine lines, but I'm not feeling any kind of control with them. And again, you can see it's just not making, it's not staying in its point, is it? And also, the, sort of using the dabbing dots is almost splaying the bristles out. Yeah, I think my kind of painting does not require such smart brushes, which I guess is lucky for me. <laughs> and I, you know, I've got to stress that this test is very much a sort of personal look at what I use my brushes for and you may find you have greater use for the ones that I'm not so keen on but I just hope that this is another useful sort of contribution to the world of looking at brushes and trying to work out which one it is you want. Okay so what I'm going to do is a little round up and talk about just a few other qualities of brushes that we haven't mentioned so far. So the reason we're doing this is because it's good to be equipped with as much knowledge as possible when investing in a brush. But the investment in that brush goes on after buying it into the use of it. And I'm talking about longevity of brushes and how we look after them. So here are a few interesting points. The first thing is the brushes that have a wooden handle, if they are left languishing in a jar of water, so this sort of dreaded sight it really um, makes me feel so sad when I see this. Um, brushes should not be left like that ever because apart from giving the bristles a bit of a hard time, the main thing is, is this paint on a wooden handle will crack and split and fall off and become very uncomfortable and itchy to hold. So that's something to think about. You know, you could spend all the money in the world on a brush, but if you treat it badly, it is going to, yeah, it's not gonna be a sound investment. So uh, some brush manufacturers have tackled this by bringing out brushes that are not wooden and do not have the paint on them. This is a plastic coated brush, so it's not going to chip off in a jar of water. So if you're the kind of person who just goes, I'm afraid I leave them in the jar of water, I can't do anything about it, then why not consider something like this with a plastic handle? The other thing, of course, to mention is that sable bristles are an animal product. And if you are uh, keen to have brushes that have no animal involvement at all, then of course the synthetic bristle is your best option. And then the last thing for me to say is that different brushes have different strengths and different purposes. So I'm not going to uh, badmouth any of these brushes because I found they all had their own strengths. But let's have a little look. So the sable brushes, the really sort of high end two, were by far the best at splaying their bristles and making a really lovely, broad, well-distributed brush stroke. However, they both struggled to sort of spring back into that fine point. So it would just mean that you were having to do a few more brush strokes to really sort of tidy those up. But they're soft, they are supple, but not as springy as synthetic bristles, but they do cover just that little bit more of the page. And as far as I'm aware, as I've been told, they tend to last longer than synthetic bristles, but I do think a lot of that is down to how you treat your brushes. 
And then we've got our amazing sable brush from the affordable Aquafine range. I think it did a really fantastic job and it's a wonderful brush to have as part of your collection and how wonderful that you can have one uh, at such an affordable price. But then we've got our synthetic brushes. I mean the razor sharp points that we're getting from the Aquafine round and the Pro Art Masterstroke um, says it all. The Pro Art Masterstroke was by far the best at the fine detail, even in this size 4 range, so you can imagine why I love to use them in all sizes going right down to sort of 10 tenths of a zero. And then in between we had this professional watercolour synthetic sable, so a synthetic bristle that was very much trying to become a sable brush. Well, I think it did a lovely job, it was sort of Somewhere in between, it wasn't the best at anything, but it certainly wasn't the worst. It sprang back a little bit better than the sable bristles, but it didn't give us the fine detail that we were looking for of the synthetic brush like Masterstroke. So what I will round up with and saying, these are all very, very worthy brushes to have in your kit. There's a real range of quality here. What I will say is as I'm talking, you can see this one here the sable round, we're getting a few wayward hairs just splitting off from the bristles and if that's happened after first use maybe the De La Rowney Aquafine affordable sable, maybe it's a little too good to be true but at only £5.56 for a sable brush you're well worth trying it. Thanks so much for watching guys and I really hope that was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found that helpful. And just remember, some of the best paintings in history were painted with a few hairs on the end of a stick. So it's not all about having the best kit every time. It's about enjoying the process. So I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support, because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that you can enjoy. And if you enjoyed this one, then hit the like button and let me know how you found those reviews below. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Okay, until next time, bye!